one of the challenges that we've introduced is our current implementation relies on secure pathways such as the store privately and encrypted pathway where if a developer is calling that pathway they're assuming that it's intact and that the data that they save there will be correctly stored and encrypted but the problem is is with our current implementation there's no guarantee that the data will actually be stored correctly. And the reason is, is that this secure pathway relies on the underlying handler mapping being correctly configured in order to operate properly. So if, unfortunately, we set up these init handler method incorrectly, if we set up these individual mappings inside the handler mapping and we map the wrong handler to the wrong key, we're going to end up in a situation where, for example, the store David a privately and encrypted method ends up using a handler that's actually a public handler. And this is a simple the mistake that could be made. It's a configuration mistake, but it could actually break the underlying implementation of that secure pathway. Another challenge that we face here is that our handler mapping isn't immutable. That is, it is an actually a, a data structure that can be changed at runtime. And whenever we have a secure pathway that relies on some data structure that can be changed at runtime, we open ourselves up for the possibility of attack or the possibility that due to some bug, that secure pathway might be compromised in certain execution scenarios. So we, whenever possible, want to make our secure pathways invariant, and we want them to be fixed at runtime so that configuration errors, either on files that we use to load our application and bootstrap our state, or errors in the actual configuration of the API and its usage, don't cause our secure pathways to break. This is particularly important because we've taken so much effort to make our abstractions obvious. So we've made our abstractions and which methods should be called to be secure really obvious. But if suddenly the underlying implementation of them is compromised due to configuration errors, it can lead to very hard to detect bugs because on the surface, it looks like the API is being exercised correctly but underneath the surface, the configuration of it is actually not enforcing the rules correctly. And so what looks like correctly secured code is not. So the way that we can improve this is by trying to make our secure pathway something that is decided at compile time. We don't want runtime errors or configuration decisions that are made to affect that secure pathway. The simple way to do it in this case is to change our get private encrypted storage handler method to not use the handler mapping at all, but instead to directly instantiate the appropriate handler, in this case the private storage adapter, in order to make sure that it's always returned correctly. We don't want to end up in the situation where the handler mapping either changes at runtime due to some circumstance that we didn't anticipate, or where we have a configuration file or some other information that's used to initialize this handler mapping that is done incorrectly. We want to have pathways that are secure and that are secured at compile time and that have unit tests and other tests applied to them to make sure that they're always exercised correctly and that they always provide the security guarantees that we want. So by using this implementation and this design change where we're going to directly instantiate the appropriate handler, it greatly improves our trust in these security pathways since they're not exposed to configuration errors. Now some of you may say, but yes, aren't we going back though? Why aren't we tightly coupling our code and removing some of these wonderful patterns and abstractions we've learned to use? Well, in this case, I don't think that's actually the case. What we are doing is we're still using the storage handler interface to decouple the different parts of our code, but we're being smart about where we apply that decoupling and configurability and modularity. We don't want that decoupling and, and configurability to be present in our secure pathway in a 
way that makes it possible that our secure pathway could be compromised due to an error. We want that decoupling to be present to allow us to plug in different implementations, but we want to be able to check those implementations and test them, and we don't want to expose that pathway to configuration errors. So it's not that we are building tightly coupled code, it's that we're building code that's modular, but modular in the right places. And we don't want modularity in a, introduced into those secure pathways in a way that could compromise them at runtime or lead to very subtle and difficult to detect security problems.